We're so glad that you've joined us for our fifth Bible study, small group in our campaign, 40 Days of Community. We really do need each other. I hope again that this has been beneficial for you. While we're nearly done with our small groups, this is our last time that we'll meet as a home group in your homes in this, in this 40 days. You're welcome to continue these Bible studies beyond these 40 days. If there are other resources that you need, please seek me out and I will be very happy to provide other resources so that you can continue your small groups. Also, you're going to be asked next week for Holy Week to gather together as a small group and come to our prayer maze at church on Good Friday. It will be open from 7 a.m. to midnight, and you're welcome to come to the church together as a group. And may that be your very last opportunity together to participate in something special together. And you're welcome to fast the meal that maybe you would have eaten had you gone out together and uh, come to our uh, Good Friday fellowship and the opportunities that we have here at the church. Take that money together, and we'll have an offering box for you where you can place it in where all that money is going to go to benefit uh, the local food shelf here in Turtle Creek. And so these are the things that we're hoping that you will do as a group. We're also asking you to come up with some type of a mission project. And you know what? This coming Sunday is Palm Sunday, and we are having a mission festival after our worship service. You are welcome to participate in that. We ask that you come as your small group and present to the congregation a little booth, a little bit of information of what you would like to do to make a difference in this country, in this community, in the lives of those around you. So during this season, let's turn to our lesson for today, week number five. We've been looking at how we really do need each other. And being a Christian means being invested in the lives of other people, that there is no such thing as Jesus and me, it's Jesus and us. The unfortunate thing is we have so many bad examples in some of our Christian music and Christian literature that makes it all about us, me and Jesus, this individualistic Americana type of theme. And some of them are great hymns. I love them. I come to the garden alone. Really? I will rise. Great song by Chris Tomlin. Oh God, you are my God. Not everybody else's, just mine, oh God. I believe that you're my healer, God, Jesus and me. Isn't the attitude that we have in a lot of our contemporary music, even in some of our traditional music that we sing? Now, I'm not trying to be totally critical and harsh on these songs. I, I actually love a lot of these songs. But we have often made worship, the, uh, the, which is supposed to be the epitome of a group activity, into a pietistic, individualistic approach to God. You ever been to one of those big box churches with thousands of people on Sunday morning? You're in your nice little box. Thousands of people, but you're in your own little box in your own little worship bubble, aren't you? We're meant to interact with people. Worship is a team sport. And if these themes and songs have become the theme of your Christian life, you have wrongly understood what it means to be a Christian. Now, I'm not saying that there are times where we have to come to God alone in the middle of the night on our knees in prayer. But Christianity itself, by its very nature, is a team sport that is meant to be lived in the presence of other people. I mentioned to you that our theme for this 40-day campaign is based upon a book that was written in 1970 by a man named Reuben Welsh, who was a professor at a Christian college in California. And while that book is no longer in publication, and it's very difficult to find, in fact, we looked online to see if we could provide copies for everybody in the congregation, and the cheapest copies we found were $20, $25, and we just, we just can't afford $25, 100, 200 copies of that. Um, but what we wanted to do is at least make sure you got a sampling of some of the things that he did in his book. And I want to read to you a large excerpt from his book. I haven't done that before this time, but it's a great story. It's the story that he ends his book on with. And so I'm quoting directly from the book, We Really Do Need Each Other, by Reuben Welsh. At school a few years ago, there was a summer school course and group in interpersonal relations and relations. About a dozen people took the class, and at the end of the day, 
they decided that they wanted to do something together as kind of a closing to the class. You know, they had come to know each other and to share with each other and really be personal to each other and break down walls and so forth. And so they decided together to take a hike up Henniger Flats. Now, Henniger Flats is about three miles up the side of a mountain behind the campus and it takes about an hour and a half for anyone to hike, to hike up. So they set, about, set the day and they made the sandwiches and made the chocolate and brought the cold drinks and the backpacks and they all got together and gathered up for the safari and they started up the mountain together. But it wasn't long until the strong stalwart, stalwart ones were in front and the others were in back and in the middle and way back at the end of the line was a girl named Jane who was, you might say, out of shape. At the front was Dawn, a big, strong, former paratrooper. He and some others, the strong ones, that is, were up in front, and the weak ones were in back, and way in the back was Jane. Dawn said, well, it was he who told me the story. He looked back a couple of switchbacks and saw Jane, and the Lord told him that he just better go back and walk with her. Now, that's kind of hard on him, because he has a need to be first. But he went down and started walking with Jane, and the people at the level above were calling down, Come on up! It's great up here! Jane yelled, I don't think I can make it! And they hollered, Yes, you can! Try harder! Come on up! Every time they called down to her, her sense of self-worth went down, along with her sense of value. I can't make it, she yelled. Yeah, you can, come on! So the strong went ahead, and the weak hung behind, and here was Jane. And she never made it to the top. Now, look what you have. You have a group. We know each other, we like each other, we want to do this together, let's go to Henniger Flats together. But before long, you have a you have divided the strong and the weak, the haves, the have-nots, the ables and the unables. So what started out as a group has, not be, has now become a fragmented collection. And so the strong say, you can do it! And the weak says, no, we can't. And the strong says, try harder, which is a really big help. That is a big help, because she didn't make it. Thankfully, this isn't the last chapter. They must have learned their lesson because they decided that this was no way to end their fellowship of a class, and so they got together and decided to do it again. But they made some new rules. It was everybody go or nobody go, and they were all going together. So they set a day, they made the sandwiches, they made the chocolate, and they brought the cold drinks and the backpacks, and they got together for their safari, and they started up the mountain. It took them four hours to make it to the top. And the water was all gone, and the cold drinks were all gone, and the sandwiches were all gone, and the chocolate was all gone, and the backpacks were empty but they all made it together. Wow. Isn't that an awesome story? I'm sure you can gather what the meaning of the lesson is. And I hope you've been inspired by this lesson. I hope you've been inspired by this series. I hope you found it beneficial to understand that you cannot go this journey of life alone. You are called to live it together with others. I hope that you understand that faith is not a personal Jesus and me adventure, but it's a Jesus and us adventure. Lived, it's no longer on an island or at the top of the mountain by yourself. It's not about Jesus and me, it's about Jesus and us together. I'm going to give you a group assignment this week. I've already introduced to you the advantages and the opportunities coming forward. I told you about on this Palm Sunday, this Passion Sunday, this coming Sunday, I'm hoping that you as a group will figure out some type of project that you would like to do in God's name together. 
And I'm asking you to come to our small group festival and fair, this ministry mission festival this Sunday after a 10 o'clock service. And I'm hoping that you will take a portion of a table and put out a picture or write something up so everybody can see what it is that your group is going to do together to be a blessing. And I'm also asking you to put uh, some, so, uh, some steps to that this coming week in Holy Week. I already told you about on Good Friday the, the uh, prayer walk and the prayer maze. I'm hoping that you'll participate in that activity together and make a collection together to help and bless our food shelf locally. These are the opportunities that I'm trying to seed for you so you can understand what it means to walk together. Right now you've been gathered together as a small group. It's time for you to walk out of the comfort and safety of your homes or wherever your small groups are taking place and do something to love somebody else, to take and touch and see and feel and bless people in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I can't wait to see what we are going to do. I am just believing that we are going to transform the world around us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you once again for this powerful lesson of how we really do need each other. We have walked these 40 days and journeyed together, but this is not the ending of our journey. It's only a beginning if we live it in a relationship with you and each other as you intend. So I'm asking that every person here in this group, maybe this group, this may be the last time or the next to last time this group ever gets together. I don't know. But I'm hoping they have been inspired by this opportunity to know that they have to live their lives with other people if they're going to live a full life in Jesus Christ. We ask you to send them forth in peace, in your presence, and in the presence of one another. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Enjoy your time together, and may God bless you with many more opportunities. Amen.